so welcome you all assalamu alaikum bismillahir rahim so we start our today session so this is our virtual academic program and we all know we are socially connecting in this era of social distancing and today our session is on adjuvant chemotherapy in breast cancer whom to give and what to give our faculty is dr shahida alam she is one of the most brilliant but very intelligent oncologist of our profession i have i used to word definitely she is brilliant because her career says that intelligent because she chose this career because she found out which is the subject where she had to work very less to become very uh, sound so she picked it up i remember when she first came to our institute and we are so happy that she has really became a wonderful oncologist and uh, especially she has special interest in breast and in cancer institute she is respected very much for breast cancer so uh, regarding the three overseas faculties zakir dr zakirullah sk farid as usual one is my senior and one is my junior and john conibear grateful to john for giving us the time and then um, our patron and our inspiration professor m hi sir he is with us and quickly <clears throat> today's program is again for 90 minutes presentation is 15 minutes comments 15 minutes question and answer 30 minutes case discussion 20 minutes quiz 5 minutes and vote of thanks and wrap up 5 minutes and stratification already last time we discussed so i think we don't need to uh, go for it so this is the thing so very quickly i am going to because today our coordinator is a bit away so i have to cover the evalu- uh, analysis of our last program last program was on nct and breast cancer option or necessity our faculty was dr mustafa aziz shuman and we have all the three foreign faculties attended we sent invitation close invitation to 62 but our participation was 75 and in quiz our participation was 22 and we have received 14 feedback our winner was dr ujan bataju who is uh, in from nepal i don't know whether he is joining today from nepal or not so if you compare the session you can see that gradually in every portion invitation participation quiz feedback if you are we have a gradual rise so thank you that is our uh, analysis so now i request dr um, shahida to start her presentation i am stopping screen share so now Lima, you can share your screen and start. Okay. Uh, slide show. Okay. Maximize. Uh, this this is the maximum. Everything. Every, okay. Yeah. Yes. You, you can see the, this clearly. Yes. Yes. Okay. So should I start? Good afternoon and welcome you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamal, for your super kind introduction. I'm really feeling great, and my deep gratitude to the organizer for giving me the chance. to read and refresh myself today i will be talking on adjuvant chemotherapy in breast cancer whom to give and what to give let's get started with a very basic what is adjuvant chemotherapy the term adjuvant derived from the latin word which means to assist or help so the chemotherapy that i offers to the patient after definitive surgery for breast cancer is termed as adjuvant chemotherapy and the aim is eradication or control of undiscovered distant metastasis so the surgery is done for a local or local regional breast cancer so why this question of distant metastasis for this we have to look back to the history century or more than century years ago the way people looked at breast cancer was totally depend on halstead theory and that was if you have more radical surgery that is more structure are removed the chance of cure is increased recurrence and death are due to inadequacy of surgery but instead of doing radical and supra radical surgery 
more and more patients were coming back with disease and that indicated there was something wrong. Then another surgeon, Dr. Bernard Fisher, came up with his hypothesis, which was breast cancer is a systemic disease, blood stream is important for tumor dissemination, and there is no orderly spread. Without involving the axillary lymph node, the tumor may spread distantly. In many years of evolution and many, many students, the science behind the science behind adjuvant chemotherapy remains both local and systemic control are important for survival of breast cancer patient and in, and we need to optimize the therapies so for a long time breast cancer was considered as a as a single entity and the treatment was very simple but after this availability of this gene expression profile we now understand that breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease. There are so many class, classes and subclasses of breast cancer. So the outcome of adjuvant chemotherapy is not the same for all breast cancer. There may be some patient who will get benefit of the adjuvant treatment without toxicity or a very little toxicity. So we should offer adjuvant chemotherapy to this group of patient. And there may be another group of patient which will get no benefit with the toxicity. So we must not offer chemotherapy to this group of patients. So how can we predict this? So there are some state of art steps of adjuvant therapy decision making, which is estimation. So we have to estimate first the absolute risk of recurrence if untreated based on the tumor stage and the histopathology. And then we have to estimate the relative risk reduction from adjuvant intervention based on the widely accepted data. And then we have to uh, translate this relative risk to the absolute benefit based on patient and tumor factors. And finally, we have to decide if the adjuvant treatment is worth it, which is a balance between the risk versus toxicity. And a very important thing in this, the patient preference, we have to discuss all the things to the patient and we should not take any decision unilaterally. So the natural history of breast cancer has modified and we are now moving from anatomy and pathology to tumor biology. And since the everybody can't have that genomic profile, so we have to depend for our day-to-day -day practice this immunohistochemical surrogates of intrinsic subtype of breast cancer. In, our com in my coming slide, you can see that the treatment recommendation is based mainly on this intrinsic subtype. And we all know the breast cancer subtypes, that is luminal A, luminal B, heart to negative type and heart to positive type, and heart to positive breast cancer and basal type. So there are some several prognostic factors. Depending on uh, and calculating these prognostic and predictive factors, we can roughly have an idea of the risk of recurrence and the magnitude of benefit from the adjuvant chemotherapy. So the determining prognosis earliest as breast cancer also has evolved. Previously, we were used the clinical prognostic factors like age, tumor size, nodal status, great KI-67, hormone receptor status, and heart status. Then we moved to computer-based multivariate prognostic model. The examples are adjuvant online and predict. Then we move to first generation gene expression test, the memaprine and Oncotype DX. So the Oncotype DX is a 21 gene uh, is assay and has been best validated and recommended by NCCN uh, to, do a, to advise for all patients of lum earliestest luminal A breast cancer. And then we move to second generation gene expression test that is endopredict prosigna and breast cancer index. I don't have the scope to put details in this, in this presentation. So here is an example of computer-based uh, prognostic model, the adjuvant online. We have to put the uh, input the data in the left-hand side, uh, like some patient factor, ACE comorbidities, the tumor stays, and the, some predictive factors, ERPR status, heart status. Then the system 
will roughly tells you the uh, estimated roughly tells you the risk of recurrence and the magnitude of benefit of any treatment. Uh, what happened if you add only chemotherapy or what happened if you combine chemotherapy with hormone therapy or what happened if you only give hormone therapy. So we have to discuss this to the patient and then it is it will be a both-sided decision making. From this slide, we can see the importance of genomic assay in breast cancer uh, um, and in the decision make and human decision making in breast cancer compared to the clinical risk. You can see that approximately 46% of women with breast cancer who are at high risk clinical might not require chemotherapy. So we can spare this 46% of patients if we do a genomic risk assay. So the, in this current era, the, just offering a genetic risk assay is worth it. So we should offer the patient to this. Then the, another point is ISC4 score, that is immunohistochemistry 4 score. This is a semi-quantitative expression of ERPR, HER2, and KI67. And retrospective analysis of trans attack trial revealed that the four markers when combined can produce a score with high prognostic relevance. And the amount of prognostic information in ISC4 is similar to genomic health research score. So back to our scenario, as we can't have uh, the uh, genomic assay for most of our patients, so can we use this ISC4 with the clinical score to spare some patient for adjuvant chemotherapy. I would like to hear some comment regarding this from Dr. John after finishing my presentation. So now we'll see, looked into the NCCN guideline, which we follow most, the uh, recommendation of adjuvant chemotherapy in breast cancer. Don't get scared seeing this complex slide. This is not that hard that it seems like to be. So this also based on, as I said earlier, this is based on the intrinsic subtype uh, and with the um, stays uh, and some clinical factor. So the first group is luminal A, that is hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative disease and node negative. So this, this patient, this current era, this group of patient as the most debatable patient, whether we should offer them chemotherapy or not. So NCCN guideline recommends strongly consideration of 21 gene RT-PCR assay, which is the category one recommendation for all patients of this group, except T1A and zero. So if this assay is not available, then we have to offer adjuvant chemotherapy to the patient. And if we can do the assay, then if the score is 31 or more, then we have to offer the patient adjuvant chemotherapy along with hormone therapy. If it is intermediate, that is 26 to 30, there is a recommendation that is category 2A, then we have to offer adjuvant chemotherapy to the patient, especially if the patient is younger, less than 50 years of patient is not like to have benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy. So we should spare this patient from chemotherapy. So the second group is non-positive luminal A. So before if not is positive, we definitely need to positive and patient is not a candidate for chemotherapy for other comorbidities or other factors, then we have directly go to endocrine therapy. But if the patient from the clinical uh, uh, scenario that is cl clinical characteristic, tumor stage and pathology, it says the patient is a candidate of chemotherapy, then we should order, uh, offer the patient genomic assay. And based on this, we have to offer the patient the adjuvant chemotherapy. For the next three group of patients, uh, the uh, decision of chemotherapy is quite obvious. So the hormone receptor positive and HER2 positive, that is luminal B type, is quite aggressive and they are mostly get benefit from chemotherapy. So according to NCCN guideline, all patients should be treated with the adjuvant chemotherapy of this group except T1A N0. Please don't go. Then another group, hormone receptor negative, 
and HER2 negative. So this group also quite obvious, all patients should be treated with adjuvant chemotherapy except T1A and 0. So there is another group, I think I missed that one, that is uh, hormone receptor negative and HER2 positive. This patient also, this group of patient also, all the patient should get chemotherapy except very early stage, that is T1A N0, tumor less than, tumor is 5.5 centimeter to one centimeter. Sometimes we can uh, point up to 0.5 centimeter, so we can spare this patient from chemotherapy. So what to give? So now come to the action. So, uh, for this patient, would uh, the preferred protocol, who, uh, what chemotherapy we should offer to this patient. So there are several combination chemotherapies that are appropriate for uh, adjuvant setting. And the NCCN guideline offers this chemotherapy and they give the recommendation in the basis of HER2 negative or HER2 positivity, not in the basis of uh, lymph node status. And all these protocols are uh, have been uh, a, evaluated in a clinical phase three clinical trial. So we can see that most of the protocol is a combination of anthracycline, cyclophosphamide, and ataxin in different uh, dose scheduling and a different time intervals. And you can see that there are some uh, protocols. They divided the protocols into preferred regimen and the useful in certain circumstances and other recommended regimen. What does it mean? The preferred regimen means the intervention based on superior efficacy, safety, and evidence, and they are more affordable than the other types. So in this preferred regimen, we have the dose dense AC followed by every two weekly paclitaxel. We have dose dense AC followed by weekly paclitaxel and a TC that is doxetaxel and a cyclophosphamide. And another uh, uh, recommendation is the, the here, which is the tailoring of the adjuvant therapy after the new adjuvant therapy for triple negative breast cancer. So what does it mean that useful in certain circumstances? That means they, are may, they may be used in selected patient population. Like if a patient is an early stage disease and she has some comorbidity, uh, you can't give this anthracycline, then you can use CMA for this patient. And the other recommend resume, recommended regimen, we have the TAC, AC followed by doxetaxel, T weekly, EC. These are somewhere the less efficacious, more toxic, or based on less mature data. Or they are affordable, less affordable for the same outcome than the preferred regimen. So whenever possible, we should choose the preferred regimens. Then the second part is the HER2 positive disease. Here is more or less the same protocols like uh, AC followed by paclitaxel. The difference is that we have to combine the immunotargeted therapy here. So we know that anthracycline containing drugs are superior in case of a HER2 positive disease. But you can see here two protocols without anthracycline. One is paclitaxel plus uh, trastuzumab, which is given uh, paclitaxel weekly. And, also known as Tolani regimen. Uh, it is offered to the very earliest uh, heart to positive and hormone receptor negative breast cancer patient, especially the patient with comorbidities with T1 N0 disease. There's another protocol which is devoid of anthracycline, is TCH, that is doxetaxel, carboplatin, and trastuzumab. And other, and, and other protocols are more or like same as heart to positive breast cancer. So I'd like to quickly go through some landmark study. In 1976, the Unadona landmark paper was CMF decreased the recurrence in node positive disease. And from this paper, the golden era of adjuvant breast cancer, uh, adjuvant chemotherapy of breast cancer has been started and which is until going on. In 1999, the EBC-TCC analysis showed anthropist chemotherapy is superior to CMF. And then another landmark study is ECOG E1199, uh, which is a fourth arm trial, randomized 4,950 women to receive AC followed by either paclitaxel or doxetaxel given in an every week or a three weekly, every three weekly or a weekly schedule. And this study showed that three weekly paclitaxel is superior than three weekly doxetaxel 
and three-weekly doxytexel is superior than three-weekly paclitexel. So from this recommendation, the preferred schedule came to the NCCN guideline. Another very important study is NACBPB36, which compared six cycles of FEC with four cycles of AC. And the result showed that six cycle of FEC is not superior in terms of disease-free survival or overall survival than AC, but more toxic. So based on this NACBPB36 trial, uh, NCCN guideline has now excluded the FEC or FEC protocol from their recommended regimen for adjuvant chemotherapy. So these are some uh, uh, slides of uh, some major study that is EBC TCG 1998 uh, meta-analysis, uh, which I recommend the anthracycline containing polychemotherapy versus uh, CMF. And you can see there is a clear benefit of 12% risk of recurrence. 12, the risk of recurrence came down by 12% when anthracycline-based chemotherapy is used compared to CMF chemotherapy. So it was a landmark at that time. So then came the era of toxins. And it has been shown that the, after this taxin, the breast cancer related death can be halved if you use taxin, then no chemotherapy. So in EBC TCC 2012 analysis, they, has, they showed that when you use a taxin with anthracycline, the risk of recurrence reduced by 4% when you use anthracycline alone. And the risk of death also decreased by using taxins. Then the question comes, when you use these two drugs, should we use it sequentially or concurrent? This forest, forest plus clearly shows that when we use anthracycline and taxin in concurrent, in a sequential fashion, it, the, it is more better, for, it's, the, it favored the sequential than the concurrent. It may be due to in sequential chemotherapy, there is more number of cycles, the, uh, do, uh, and the uh, uh, dose of taxin is more, and it showed that the toxicity is more in concurrent time. From this analysis, it has been recommended that the sequential uh, anthra and taxin uh, is better than concurrent. So another landmark study is US oncology trial, uh, which uh, was published in 2006, and which compared four cycles of AC with four cycles of TC that indicates dexotere and cyclophosphamide. So what is the what was the background of this study? So they, they want, wanted to know that if we can spare the anthracycline and can use just the taxin with other drug combination. So the primary aim, primarily the cause was that uh, cardiotoxicity related with the anthracycline and some secondary malignant and some late effect of anthracycline like myelodysplastic syndrome and the second malignancy. So they compared two groups, four AC with four TC. And you, uh, you can see clearly that there is a, at least absolute benefit of 6% when uh, we use TC than AC. Uh, the benefit is also in disease-free survival and overall survival also. Then another matter analysis came with uh, whether dose dense chemotherapy is better or conventional chemotherapy is better, conventional uh, spacing chemotherapy is better. And you can see clearly with this, um, from this forest plot, that all the bars are in favor of dose dense chemotherapy. So the recommended schedule is all dose dense chemotherapy. So now I, I would like to end, it, end up with some recommendations that I have collected from NCCN guideline and um, SMO guideline. This, so these are some points to note during we prescribe adjuvant chemotherapy. So adjuvant chemotherapy should preferably start within three to six weeks of surgery. After three weeks, after 12 weeks of uh, uh, surgery, if we uh, offer the chemotherapy, there must be less effect. It should be administered for 12 to 24 cycle weeks, that is four to eight cycles. If chemotherapy and endocrine therapy used as adjuvant therapy, it should be given sequentially with endocrine therapy following the chemotherapy. 
So we have to finish the chemotherapy first, then we give the endocrine therapy. And if chemotherapy and radiotherapy are to be used, then chemotherapy should usually proceed RT. So we have to complete the chemotherapy cycle and then we uh, give the radiation therapy to the patient. And from this data, we clearly see, uh, it, is, it has been shown clearly that sequential anthracycline taxin regimen is the standard for majority of the patient. In selected low risk patient, four cycles of AC or DC or CMF may be used. From our perspective, sometimes a uh, question remains in my mind that some we are using taxin a bit uh, overusing taxin for some low risk group of patient. With all the patient, we just give them. Uh, in a same frame, but we have to uh, realize that we have to uh, need to remember the thing Then one size doesn't fit for all. So for all patient AC followed by taxin or for all, all patient FAC should not be. So we have to select some low risk group that is T1 N0 disease, uh, T1 N0 M0 disease, hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, patient is elderly. This group of patients, we usually offer them four cycle of AC or DC instead of sequential taxin or um, anthracycline. For all patients, we don't need taxin and anthracycline combination. And anthracycline containing resumes are superior for node positive and HER2 positive tumors. Taxin containing resumes are superior for node positive and HER2 positive tumors. Anthracycline based regimen should not include 5 FU. NCCN panel has excluded FAC or FEC as an option for adjuvant therapy. So the patient who, for whom we select for six cycle of FAC or FEC, we should, based on this evidence, we can give this patient just four cycle of AC with the same efficacy and less toxicity. Every three-week paclitaxel regimen has been removed from the NCCN guideline. So for the best, three-weekly paclitaxel is no more recommended. You have to give either weekly or two-weekly. And dose test schedule with granulocyte stimulating factor support should be considered. And we should not forget our old friend CMF. Still, there are some scope of giving CMF. Retrospective analysis of MF5 suggested CMF marginally more effective than FEC in basal like breast cancer. So in a TNBC patient who is uh, contraindicated for anthracycline or a taxin, for this patient, we can offer CMF. And another burning issue in this current era, should we uh, add platinum in the adjuvant setting of triple negative breast cancer? Is it ready to use? But the answer is no, still the data of overall survival or disease-free survival is missing. So the, there is no recommendation of use platinum compound in the adjuvant setting. But so with this, I end my presentation and thank you for being with me. Thank you, Lima. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, I think uh, after this presentation, we will learn what to give and what not to give because this is very important today, not only to decide when to give, what to give, but it is very important what not to give. So uh, Dr. Shahida requested John to make some comment. Would you like to make some comment, John? In, instead of genomic assay, can we use the ISC4 score and clinical risk as a factors for uh, sparing some patient from chemotherapy? Um, so in our practice now, you know, we're, we're restricted in the NHS in the UK. So we, we can only select Oncotype GX testing for patients with an NPI score of 3.6 or above. And so essentially, the patients with a grade 2 ER positive tumour, they have to have a tumour size of 20 millimetres or above. Um, and any patient with a grade 3 tumour that's no negative we can send for Oncotype GX testing. So essentially patients with NPI scores of less than 3.6, we still make decisions about adjuvant chemotherapy without sending them for um, a gene panel assay test. So yeah, we still 
make those decisions with patients. Does that answer your question? So we are stratified in the UK to using the tests. Okay, John, uh, now I request the juniors will, will to bring up some questions. I have seen some in the uh, chat box. Could you please unmute and ask your questions? I am juniors. Sir, I'm Dr. Ali Nafisat. Can I ask one question? No, you are a faculty. You are the third priority. First priority is the students. Uh, you sir, are I'm supposed to sir. answer. Yes, sir, please. Sir, I'm, I'm Dr. Riyad, sir. sir I, ask, I have two questions. One is, why NCCN recommend anthracycline and 5 FU not to use together? And another is, is there any indication of adjuvant chemotherapy after new adjuvant CT, except in capsidabine in case of TNBC? Okay, I asked Shahida to answer the first question. The second question will be answered during the case discussion. So we will cover there. So Shahida, can you answer the first question, please? Already you covered it in your lecture, but I can repeat it. Why uh, for IBUF has been removed by NCCN? Lima, hello, hello, can you hear me, Lima? Oh, sir, madam, it's disconnected. Okay. So, uh, if I am allowed, the answer is that it has shown that if you compare with three drug versus two drugs, she has shown that it is adding toxicity but not giving any survival benefit. That's why to avoid the toxicity and not to get any survival benefit, now it is preferred AC compared to APC. So that's why they have removed the APC from the NCCN panel. And the second question, as I said, it will be covered in our case discussion. So anymore, I will I will give the Thank floor you, to Ali Nafisa. Don't worry, but let us see some juniors to come up. Then definitely you will get the chance. Any more question from the junior? Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, if a patient already received the uh, cyclophosphate, can you please identify yourself first? Then you ask the question, please. Oh yes, I am uh, Dava Kosar from Myanmar. And currently practicing as a general surgeon. And uh, I would like to ask um, about a, a patient who already uh, done the total mastectomy, axillary clearing, and uh, 12 weeks um, post operative received the uh, CMF regime. And uh, it was uh, about eight years ago, and the patient developed the uh, brain metastasis, since now the brain metastasis, epilepsy and increase ICD features, uh, then how will you uh, manage? Will you uh, change the another chemotherapy? Or in this uh, case, uh, what is the appropriate treatment? If I'm not wrong, you said that it was a case who was done surgery and received adjuvant chemotherapy with CMF. After eight years, she developed brain metastasis. Am I correct? No, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, only uh, cycles of the chemotherapy with CMF and uh, immediately after CMF, uh, she has a brain metastasis. Oh, just she after CMF, she developed a brain metastasis. Yes. So your question is whether it is a hormone receptor positive or negative? Uh, we don't do the hormone receptor status um, in our country regularly. So uh, uh, assuming that uh, it is negative, Okay, John, would you like to comment? Because it is an interesting case. She is telling that adjuvant, there is no hormone receptor status information. Uh, they have given six cycles of CMF, and just after the end of the chemotherapy, the patient developed brain metastasis. So no. I understand they will take care no. of the brain metastasis. Yeah? No, actually, only a cycle. Uh, first cycle. Oh, only one cycle. Sorry, only first, yes. after first cycle. Sorry. After, yes. It is progression during first cycle. And she developed brain metastasis. And there is, we don't know the hormone status. So what should be your, will you change the protocol? That is her question. So essentially, she needs to be fully restaged to determine if 
it's uh, any signs of distant metastatic disease beyond the brain. Um, depending on what the brain shows, obviously discussing a neuro-oncology MDT to determine whether uh, you remove the brain metastasis or treat it with stereotactic radiosurgery, or if there's multiple brain metastases, whether you do whole brain radiotherapy. So obviously to take care of the CNS disease. But if there's no signs of disease elsewhere in the body, um, again, that's a very, you know, complex conversation to have with the patient. There is an argument if you've treated the brain disease radically, then you carry on with the adjuvant chemotherapy. Um, but I would probably be, I probably wouldn't use a multi, so I wouldn't use, for instance, ACT to use at multiple lines of treatment. You know, I probably stick to six cycles of something and then watch very carefully for future relapse. So, but if we don't have hormone receptors from the original specimen, I'd be very proactive to try and get hold of new tissue, perhaps even doing a biopsy of the brain if that's the only site of disease, because that really is critical to guide you for her future management. So, interesting case. Yeah, uh, uh, there is uh, Zakir Bhai wants to make a comment. Dr. Zakir that was Dr. Sweetie, is that right? As a surgeon, I've got some questions to ask you. First of all, I was not absolutely sure what was happening because did she have any staging before you start chemotherapy? That's my first question. Because after one cycle of chemotherapy, you said that she had some brain metastasis. I think this was probably pre-existent rather than after starting chemotherapy. So there's a very good question whether she had any sort of staging done before or not. And I'm slightly worried, I don't know where you are practicing. Mostly ERPR is very commonly test done, ERPR had to status before even we start chemotherapy. Because there's some sort of idea you have to have before starting chemotherapy, what kind of chemotherapy you're going to give. Because everything is different. You can't just presume. So I know there's some deficiencies in different areas. So can you ask, can you answer these questions, please, sweetie? One is, uh, did yes. she have any staging first? Yes. Um... Uh, she is 49 years old. Uh, before the surgery, we have done all the investigation, uh, ultrasound, abdomen, chest x-ray, and um, blood test. And uh, there was uh, no um, metastasis of secondary. And then the uh, uh, complete excision, uh, total mexedomy, axillary clearance. And she has some uh, wound complications, aroma formation. And we need to... Uh, can I ask you one more thing? Yes. Hello? Do you do staging by doing ultrasound scan and chest x-ray in your center? That's how you normally yeah. do that? Uh, okay. um, uh, yes, memo, mammogram. Uh, we uh, usually uh, root out with these uh, preoperative things and mammogram uh, like this. Right. Where do you practice? I didn't actually catch it very well. Where do you practice? Myanmar. 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 She's from Myanmar. 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 Okay, that's good. Good, good. Right, okay. I think you'll definitely learn, learn from here, all this, from this learned people, that staging is slightly different than we do everywhere. So what John Conivier said, I agree with you. I agree with him that we need to make sure that she does not have any other metastasis or spread anywhere by doing a CT scan of chest, abdomen, pelvis, and bone scan, if it is available. Then you can plan treatment. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to treat this patient. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, sweetie, if I am allowed, so what John tried to say, let me sum up, that what we understand there was inadequate staging, probably we miss the brain metastasis, sometimes it happens. Even we do this imaging because routinely we don't do MRI brain. So sometimes it remains there. And we have seen some, some unfortunate case that during the treatment it progressed. It may progress at a local progression, it may progress at a distant metastasis. So what John said that we need to address the brain mats first by radiotherapy. Then there is a question, shall we treat for the uh, if it is ERPR positive, then we will go for hormone therapy and pelvic CD K4, 6, and 4 inhibitor. But if it is not done, the question will be whether we give chemotherapy. So let's think that we will give chemotherapy. Your question was, shall we continue the protocol or not? Definitely, we should not continue it. We should, if we want to give chemotherapy, we need to change something to, because the logic is the disease progressed on this protocol. So... We can try with some change thing, but there will be again arguments, is there any rational of giving chemotherapy or not? So I think uh, it is not a very uh, two plus two answer, 
but this is the scenario. So we move to our next question, please. Thanks, Sweetie, so, for sorry. joining from Myanmar. Yeah, yeah, Myanmar. yeah. I was yeah, I was disconnected for uh, some technical issue. So no I'm, problem. You are back. You are back. Uh, okay. So I, any question yeah, I to Dr. Lee? Answer the question. <laughs> yeah. Any any more question? Question. Any more question? Alina Fisa, you had a question. You can go ahead with the question. Alina Fisa, please unmute and ask the question. Thank you, sir. Slavon Likon. I have a question to John Cornibier. After breast conjuring surgery, T meter, 45 years old lady, ear positive, ear positive, PR positive, heart to negative, grade two cancer not negative patient do you suggest adjuvant chemotherapy for this uh, and to predict tool the five year benefit is 0.8 percent by chemotherapy hello uh, yeah hi thank you for the question so that's quite a big um predicted benefit eight percent is it a big tumor or is it uh, did you say it's node negative? Because normally a grade two node negative on predict gives you quite a low score, you know? So yeah. there must be something about the tumour. Has it had KI67 or some other risk factor that's gone into the predict algorithm to uh, give you an 8% benefit? Because 8%, John, I would... John, 0 0.8. 0 0.8%. Ah, sorry, okay. No, then, yeah, for 0 0.8... So millimeter cancer. I would How? normally recommend How? chemo for 0.8%. I'd recommend hormone therapy. Chemotherapy. Hormone therapy. Yeah, I'm hormone therapy. Hormone therapy. Hormone no chemotherapy. Therapy, yes. He said no chemotherapy. But, but in this group of patients, uh, genomic assay is strongly recommended. And if genomic assay is missing, then the category one recommendation is giving adjuvant chemotherapy for NCCM guideline, according to. For 12, so in the UK, uh, is, it, is that for 12 millimeter, great to no, no negative cancer? Yeah. You more, than, more than five millimeter, more than five millimeter, you have okay. to uh, uh, offer no, the I genomic assay. I'll, I'll, I need your help. Okay, I think this is a big debate between NICE and NCCN. Yeah, we are and not I going to bring it here. It. Yeah, it has already been shown by Shahida that 0.5 is the debate. So I think we will have more discussion on this when I will bring the case. I have brought this many situation intentionally in the case discussion so that these topics will be covered. So this will be the last question before we go to the case to the for it. Thank you. Lima, it was an excellent presentation. Very well done. Um, um, I was going to ask you the last slide when you said that uh, you are not recommending uh, platinum-based chemotherapy for uh, in a adjuvant setting. Um, but we know on NICE guidelines. Uh, but before I go to NICE guidelines, I would say there are seven um, trials done and meta-analysis has confirmed there is an overall survival and disease-free survival, progression-free survival benefit if you give platinum-based chemotherapy on triple negative patients. And NICE guidelines also suggest, it's already published two years back or a year before, year and a half ago, that uh, they recommend uh, triple negative cancer should be offered platinum based chemo. Neoadjuvant or adjuvant? For it, neoadjuvant or adjuvant? Neoadjuvant or adjuvant. adjuvant. And, and a, a specific subset of patient, not all well, TNB. Well, no, not all, but you have to. Then what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't mean that all TNBC. If, what if yeah. it is a 75 year old lady? No, no, so no, is, no, no. You wouldn't. So all I'm trying to say is, the meta analysis was uh, confirming that in adjuvant setting there is a uh, survival benefit, overall and progression free survival benefit, and and there are seven trials and it is published. I've uh, just seen it on PubMed. Yeah. The German and, trial. And I suggest near adjuvant chemo if it is. Um, triple negative cancers use platinum based chemo. But in I, 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 I was talking about the adjuvant setting and according, we are following the NCCN oh, guideline uh, okay. So according to the NCCN guideline- I've mentioned, I've mentioned seven trials oh, meta analysis is published yeah. right in front of me. And it suggests platinum based regimes 
give a good cho uh, choice, a, 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 is a overall survival and progression-free survival yeah. advantage because, uh, compared yeah, to non-platinum-based chemo. It's right in front of me. Yeah, uh, I, I think what is the sense. comment is that in TNBC, mm -hmm. still the gold standard is acetexane, but okay. if we see that it is not responding well, there are good data to switch to like, platinum and texane and to get a good outcome. But regarding the use it in an adjuvant setup, adjuvant as, as there are some debate, and I, I'm not telling that in oncology, we should not say absolutely cannot give. That is a very difficult, yes, NCCN is telling, that is different, NCCN is a guideline. I can customize it. I have my own situation, logic and everything. So, well, I think uh, uh, like last time, we need to be quite, um, tough on timing because we have already crossed the time. So we go to the case discussion. So uh, I see the same name of last week. Altaf Hussain Riyadh wants to be the volunteer. Is there anybody else? Because if we see the yeah. same person sitting on the hot seat every week, we it is Make good, him but... disqualified this time. <laughs> so we need to somebody else. Is there any volunteer? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody want to speak up? I want to see a lady doctor. Anybody? For what, Who sir? Wants to sit? I, I... Yes. Hello. Did I hear anybody voice? Somebody wanted to volunteer. Okay, if not, then Riyadh, you are there with me. Yes, sir. I'm so, sir. ready to sit on the hot chair. <laughs> yes, sir. This really hit. But... Huh? Okay. So today is our case. It is a 45 years old lady presented with a lump in her right breast. FNSC showed, uh, sorry for the spelling, invasive ductal carcinoma. Ultrasonogram showed a four centimeter tumor in upper outer quadrant of the right breast with right axillary lymph neuropathy. Metastatic imaging workup showed no sign of any distant metastasis. Patient underwent mastectomy with axillary dissection. And the history the pathology report is invasive ductal carcinoma, PT2, uh, PN2, M0, grade 2. So, what protocol of adjuvant chemotherapy you want to give to this patient? First generation, these, or second generation, or this third generation, or you want to do some further evaluation? The third generation, sir. Those so, you want to give the chemotherapy? Yes, you want to give for chemotherapy? Okay, uh, but I couldn't agree. We wanted to reconsider that what are the factors? It is a classical case that you she needs chemotherapy, but what are the factors we need to consider before adjuvant chemotherapy? Hormone receptor status. Because Anything else? Sir, hormone receptor status and... Okay, so let's see. So we need to see the tumor size, lymph node status, great. Beside, we also need to see the ERPR status and heart to receptor status. We need to see whether there is lymphovascular space in vision. We need to know about the key 67 and also the tumor margin. Okay. Yet, it is a mastectomy, but if it is a lumpectomy, it is more important. But still, in mastectomy also, sometimes it may deep seated tumor, we may see the pectoralis major invasion. And defining a role of chemotherapy, it is a 2019 and also of oncology publication by Cardos, Fatima Cardos, who is the authority in ESMO for breast cancer, that tumor burden is decided by tumor size, great histological subtypes, uh, hormone receptor and HER2 status, LBSI and proliferation, that is key 67, and presumed responsiveness to endocrine therapy and what Dr. Lima was repeatedly telling the patient's preference. Okay, so can we in avoid this information in select and select chemotherapy as you are recommending. Now, would you like to give her chemotherapy or would you like to take all the information? Actually, sir, as the patient is not positive, it's a case of N. It's a not positive. It's a not positive disease. So, sir, I want to add chemotherapy. No, no, but do you need those information or do you you can avoid and just jump into the treatment? That was my question. I am ready. No, I ready. I agree. You want to, you want, yes. The answer is no, we cannot avoid these things because this slide was shown by Shahida. There are, yes, sorry, sir. Lima, I have shown, I will be showing many slides that you have been showing. It is, <laughs> yes, I borrowed it okay. from you just to repeat. 
So because you see the same group of patient may have different presentation and you see the staging, AJCC in the eighth edition, they have added the prognostic hormone status and all these things along with the previous tumor node and metastasis. So today in 2020, this three information is not enough. Even we know that the patient need a classical adjuvant chemotherapy. And why? Because these three gentlemen, Lima told that they have moved with time that local disease became systemic disease. And this gentleman, when he found out the receptor, it became a personalized treatment. And so what was the rationale of giving adjuvant chemotherapy? Why we give adjuvant chemotherapy, Adnan? We give adjuvant ther chemotherapy to reduce the local and distant recurrence and increase the overall survival. Good. So we want to improve survival and decrease the risk of recurrence. Very good. So we see that this USA consensus in 2001, they have published that four to six months multi-agent chemotherapy have shown survival benefit. And this is a huge trial. Nobody can talk without this trial about adjuvant chemotherapy, which Lima has clearly mentioned. 10, 100,000 women, 123 trial meta-analysis have shown that irrespective of different factors, we are getting survival benefit about one third, anthracycline and taxane. So the case continued. Now the patient is T2, N2, and ERPR positive, HAT2 negative, grade two, KI67 is 13%. Now what will be your treatment, Adnan? Yeah, uh, Farid, can we uh, ask your question uh, later on or you want to talk now? Once you finish this case, I want to make a comment. Then yes, okay. Carry on. Okay. So, we you want to take treatment, the AC followed by Texan? Yes, sir. Good. Followed by Tumor board agreed with you. Tumor board said that the patient should get AC followed by Texan 8 cycle. Then we post give post mastectomy radiotherapy chest wall with nodal radiation, nodal radiation and tamoxifen and for 10 years. Okay. Now, when, look here, we have modified the case. The T2 is there, but the N is now zero. And all things remain same. And we have done a predict score. And predict is telling that with only surgery, there is survival chance of 94%. Adding hormone will give 95%. So, what will be the treatment now? Will you give chemotherapy to this lady or not? That's why yes. I asked Nafisa, wait, we are bringing this case. Will we give? No, sir, I don't want to give chemotherapy in this case. What is the, why? Because there is 5% five, five still, there is 5%. She said, well, I want this 5% benefit. Oh. Are you able to take an independent decision on this? Okay, so see, NCCN is telling, we, for it, sorry, we are always jumping to NCCN. You <laughs> see that if it is not done, preferred is to give chemotherapy. If it is done, they are recommending to do the score. So this is a scenario that uh, if we are not doing the Oncotype DX, then we are supposed to give chemotherapy. But what is Oncotype DX? Quickly, you see. See, this is a, as uh, Shahida said, is 21 gene essay where five is not related, 16 is the main gene, and it was validated in NSFB 20. On first shot, they have shown that low risk group scoring less than 18 uh, is not benefited from chemotherapy. So, up to this publication in 2006, in, uh, the Oncotype DX low risk group was could be safely excluded from giving adjuvant chemotherapy. But then the landmark trial came out in 2018 in AGM, yeah, yeah. that is Taylor X, that is trial assigning individualized option for treatment. So this Taylor X have shown that now we can avoid even the intermediate risk group also. Only the high risk group needs adjuvant chemotherapy. So after this Taylor X, this uh, debatable group, a big percentage now can be easily avoided more confidently I mean, even we are in a situation of dilemma. And but can I add in something here? Yeah, please. But for this intermediate uh, risk score, there is subset of patient. I am uh, coming there. Yeah, the Just young coming. age patient, yes. especially yeah, I am coming here. Lima, you see the slide. 
some chemotherapy benefit in women less than 50 or younger groups are getting even in the intermediate group. So that was the uh, outcome. And so we have done the oncotype DX of this patient and the score was 20. Tumor board considered her age below 50 years and patient was eager to take chemotherapy. So we recommended her TC for cycle followed by radiotherapy and hormone therapy for 10 years. So now Adnan, we are changing the case. You see its scenario is changing. Now it was hard to negative. Now it is hard to positive. Again, T2, N0, N0, hormone receptor positive, hard to positive. What will be your treatment? The adjuvant chemotherapy with trust, along with trastuzumab followed by adjuvant hormone therapy. Okay. So let's see what uh, uh, this is telling. In NCCN, you go back that it was a N0. So it is telling in N0, you need to give hormone therapy and trastuzumab and chemotherapy is plus minus. Again, you need to use your judgment that shall we give it? So it is a gray zone. So shall I or shall I not give? Because this NCCN is not giving and it is a uh, category two recommendation. So no, when there is no, sir, tumor size is tumor more size than, than five cm. centimeter. But in India, the tumor size is three cm. The tumor was three centimeters. Tumor size is less than five cm. No, no, I am. Uh, please, Lima, let me allow to proceed. Then I am coming. So why I told this because this is the group that when it is T1, T2, N0, HR positive, then there is a benefit of giving chemotherapy in this type of group in APT trial. And also in seven years follow up, they have shown that there is survival benefit of this. But again, if you see the Lancet publication, they have shown 100% survival giving added chemotherapy to this T1, T2. I'm not giving 0.5 centimeter, I'm talking T1, T2. I'm bringing it a bigger environment. But the problem is all these are single arm study. So still there is a debate, even NCCN is telling I know the nice people will not agree to give chemotherapy. They will say, we will give only hormone and trastuzumab because the tumor is still T1, T2 and it is hormone receptor positive. So there is a, uh, and any role of K67 in this women health study group, they have shown that there is a, they, in there they have done some simplification that K67 could be a role of stratification of high and low risk group. But this is the publication that is coming out on the 2020 ESCO. They have shown an interesting figure on this T1, T2, M0, M0, HUD2 positive group that the benefit is depending not on the size, but on the hormone receptor status. So T1, A, B group in, in negative, HUD2 positive, they are saying ER status is more important factor so in this situation, we are we can take a decision, but we have a debate. So now we are we have brought the situation to different situation. It is T two N one. We are positive, and hormone uh, HAT two new positive. What will be your recommendation? My recommendation is adjuvant chemotherapy with trust, uh, along with trastuzumab uh, and partuzumab followed by adjuvant and then adjuvant hormone therapy. So a question is how you take the decision? Guidelines, consider different risk factors, go to the tumor board, who, whatever the majority tumor board member says, talk with Farid and Zakirullah what they say, based on your own experience or considering gene expression essay. Um, according to newest trial, sir, adding of Partuzumab along with trastuzumab. I'm talking about chemotherapy. I'm not giving. I'm not arguing about trastuzumab and partuzumab. I'm talking about chemotherapy. Will you give or not? Yes, sir. You will give. Fine. So let's jump to this again. NCCN. NCCN said if the node is less than four, you can give. You cannot give chemotherapy. But the category one, they are telling you can give chemotherapy. So again, it's a gray zone. And ESMO is telling 
in luminal A, if it is one to three nodes, you may give chemotherapy. So you are not sure that whether you can give or not. So the fourth man in the scene come to the play. So these three people were doing a great job. Now the C Europe group, they came with the genetic analysis of breast cancer and telling that, well, even what we see is not everything. Breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease. And now take help of the further page of uh, NCCM guideline, you see for the node positive, oncotype DX is there, but not yet the best thing. Best thing for node one to three node positive, this group is mamaprint, 70 gene assay. The level one recommendation is to use mamaprint, but all these are 2A. So any of this genetic mutation will help you to take the clean cut decision whether we can exclude the patient of giving chemotherapy or not in one to three node. But we need to wait for this SWAG S1007 study, which is clearly trying to see the benefit in this group of, and um, we can see the results. Uh, hello? Okay, so we need to wait for this SWAG S1007 result to take a conclusive decision about this group of patients. Now, again, course modified, Riyadh mentioned it. Now the hormone receptor is negative, but the other things are same. So what will be the treatment? We are talking always about the chemotherapy portion, not about others. What do you do? Will you give chemotherapy to this patient or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, here uh, NCCN is telling the whole bunch of the group we need to give because now it is the hormone receptor is negative. We have already discussed that hormone receptor is a big player in this type of scenario. Okay, now we are adding the, this hard to new is also negative. So what will we do? I will give chemotherapy, sir. Okay, you will give chemotherapy except N0, everywhere they are recommending chemotherapy. Now, we are changing the case again. Now the patient is after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. It is YPT1N1. We are, we are positive, hard to new, negative. Grade three, KI6713. Will you give more chemotherapy or only hormone therapy? Adna. Um, so YPT1N1. We have finished eight cycle chemotherapy to this lady. Now the patient is here with you. Sir, I will give only hormone therapy. Yes. It is in a different setup, except, yeah, for it, I think now you want to talk. If I don't talk now, then there is no point talking. Okay, okay, I please. Apologize. Apologize. Yeah, please. Tell why. Because we are just concentrating on one, only chemo talking. I know today's topic is chemo, but we are not thinking about the whole patient. First of all, no, we are no, not no. thinking about... Yeah. Because yeah, often, if there is a note positive, nobody, none of the young doctors, trainees are talking about radiotherapy. They're just saying we just give chemotherapy. But if there is a no, note no, positive, I'm asking them the only, radiotherapy I'm on, is a must. I'm, it's a new I'm recommendation. Asking, I'm ask, only asking about the chemotherapy portion because I know if I bring the radiotherapy here, on the first answer, we said we will give chest wall radiation and nodal radiation. So that will be, we are intentionally avoiding it for it. Fair enough. And then secondly, okay. it was a non-starter. The whole picture was a non-starter to me because we need to get our basics right. First of all, this lady is 45. I I'm no, I, you have changed the scenarios a lot, but what you said is an FNAC was done. Why FNAC? Because yeah, we know that, that was, I know that is a, that was a scenario. What I told it was a FNAC done, no core biopsy. There was no adequate information. And the patient was from a periphery, a state where mastectomy was done. I know it should not be done, but this is a life scenario that we face every day. I am not telling it is a right thing, but it was not the correct thing. And before to this session, we have discussed many times that core biopsy is very important. Yes, Kori. So Yeah, I like you to reiterate so that you teach your trainees that although you mention FNAC, they don't take this home message that FNAC No, 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 it was a so wrong decision, was, yes. Why was it not considered near adjuvant tumor at the very first place with this yeah, case? That, yeah, that was a good question. And I was expecting a Riyadh will ask that why you uh, the surgery was done, why NSCT was not done, why core biopsy was not done. But it is a valid question for it said that ideally this patient should have done a core biopsy and then the patient should have gone for a new adjuvant chemotherapy and then try for breast conservation. And 
so on. So it was not a classical thing happened, but unfortunately still, this is a common picture that we are facing. So coming back, we are running out of time because we don't have something more to discuss. So you see that capstamine is only in triple negative is the recommendation, but we know in some scenario we can change, but in other, even there is no total complete pathological response, even there is no positivity after eight cycle, now there is no recommendation of giving further chemotherapy. You can continue trastuzumab and fatuzumab if it is hard to positive, but in case of an, a hormone, if it is hormone positive, but there is no role of additional of chemotherapy once you finish the total cycle before as a new adjuvant. So now, Riyadh, last, uh, mucinous carcinoma, pathology is changed, YPT1 in one. Will you give chemotherapy or hormone therapy? I will give only hormone therapy. Yes. Yeah, in uh, this type of group, which is uh, favorable histology, normally we don't give chemotherapy except it is a not positive situation. So, we are, why YP? Why YP? So, if this patient it was not it was, chemotherapy it, it was not YP, it will be P. It was a P. Oh, it is not YP, YP. it is P. P. Come on, boy. So, again, Riyadh said. Adjuvant mm -hmm. hormone therapy. Then you should have mentioned adjuvant hormone ther radiotherapy followed by adjuvant hormone therapy. Yeah, Riyadh, 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 Riyadh. You you yeah. should say yes. you yes. said yes. say yes. and yes. hormone therapy for how many years? That is long. Let me ask you. In new seniors, if you give hormone therapy for how many years? You will give five or ten. But I don't have any idea. Five years in this type of favorable group, they don't recommend ten years. Five. Okay. So does all patient relapse without a treatment chemotherapy. What do you think, Riyadh? Well, it's a... in, interestingly, you see, this is the publication in 2005 in BMJ. They have shown the a big percentage of patients only with surgery don't relapse. So we need to find out who are those that who actually don't need chemotherapy. And besides also, we want to look at the toxicity of the cost of drug. Newer drug is coming with wonderful result, but very high cost. On top of that, we need to put the cost of AI and also the cost of trust as a So it is important to find out the group that who are not candidate of chemotherapy. So this MEMA, uh, this MINDEC trial, which published in 2016, they were trying to find out the high clinical risk patient who don't need chemotherapy. So either using adjuvant or predict, they are telling it is a high risk group, but they may be escaped from giving chemotherapy. And they have done, and they have shown the discordance group, if they are genetically, they can determine this low risk group, there is only 1.5% benefit. So this MINDEC trial, I mean, this 70 gene essay is popularizing because we can escape a group percentage of patient that can be avoid chemotherapy. Okay. so. This is the last on this, this is a BCI. BCI is the uh, Hox B13 and uh, IL117 BR, these two gene index. The BCR is important because all the prediction was done for five years recurrence, but this is a long-term recurrence they were showing. And BCI was validated by interesting trial is ATOM trial. ATOM was the parent trial who has shown that not five years, we should use hormone 10 years to get a survival benefit. And on the atom subsequent, they have validated BCI that it is a good prognostic factor. Okay, so do we need to do gene test for all patients? The answer is no. Only on the debatable area, we, can, we need to do the gene test. And now, Riyadh, in Bangladesh, if you want to do a Oncotype DX or MEMA print, it will cost you around 4,500 US dollar to 5,000 US dollar. Do you think it is cost effective? No. Riyadh, what do you think? No, sir. You don't think it is cost effective? Okay, let's see. Europe and America, they have found it is cost effective. They have shown by doing this test, they are saving millions of dollars. And in Bangladesh, I have made a small calculation. If we give eight cycle with originator molecule, one patient needs 2,500 to 3,000 US dollar to cover the cost of the drug. And I am not costing the other cost like granocyte or 
the hospital or toxicity or the sufferings. And then if we can avoid it, maybe for some patient it is cost effective. Okay, the final comment is that early breast cancer, who needs chemotherapy? This clinical pathological generators are best used in patient. Nothing is independent. Responsiveness is a continuum and patient preference is very important. So today, we cannot deal only with this in 2020. We need to have this also to give a good conclusion. So avoiding unnecessary medical care can save lives. So it is not only giving medicine save lives, sometimes we can save lives by avoiding unnecessary medical care. Thank you, Riyadh. It was wonderful having you with me. So now it is quiz time. Regan, are you there? Yeah, sir. Quiz link is given in the chat box, sir. Okay, quiz link is given in the chat box. So you please start counting that time now. Yeah, time, countdown has started. And I have seen the question. Believe me, question is quite tricky. It was done by Shahida. So be cautious about answering the questions. Can I participate to this quiz? Uh, yes, but no, you will be excluded from the... Uh, if you get the award, you will be excluded. <laughs> I think Faisal Hassan can participate. Yeah, we will send the award. Okay. So four more minutes. Four more minutes to go. I think I'm thinking that next time we will reduce the time to three minutes. Five minutes is too much, maybe for 10 questions. We can use this time for other discussion, That's can we? Involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can make it three minutes and keep this for discussion. Yeah. I was very pleased to see that you uh, display Taylor X trial uh, at least you, you, you spend some you know, nice words about it. Because I was missing this and <laughs> the few other newer trials as well. Yeah, but in, initially, it was in my presentation also that Taylor X and the responder, but uh, as the slide numbers was too, are too many, I have to cut down something. That's why I cut that slide, the Taylor X and the responder trial. So you see, for it, what we do, we always cop, cop, take the first presenter slide and we try to cover up by mixing the thing and some overlap, some addition, because you know, Taylor X, we need to know. We may not practice, but we need to know. Today, we cannot say that we don't know. We are not practicing today, but we don't know tomorrow it will end. Oh, most important is I believe in our country, we should discuss with, with the patient because they should not feel that it is not discussed because tomorrow if they go to overseas and they hear this, they may think that we are not discussing this. So that is the reason I tell my junior colleagues that we should discuss all the best possible thing and tell that unfortunately it is not available, but there is an option. We don't know, maybe he will take a flight and he or she will do it. Hello? You know, Onkotai BX is available in Bangladesh for almost over yeah. a year. Yeah, yeah. And they go to through the genomic health to USA. Same thing we are using. It goes to same source, which is fantastic. So we have two more minutes to go. Yeah, because Oncotype DX, only they are doing. Only Genomic Health is doing. Nobody is, yeah, I think, yet is doing it. So, yeah. Other uh, companies doing other tests. Yeah, Oncotype DX is only totally there. So, yes, there are centers and, and uh, they are doing it. It's true. Because it is very important. One of my senior colleagues, he is a doctor. His wife is a doctor. And they were aware of Oncotype DX after going abroad and they, he came that you may not have the technology, but you must have the information. That was his comment. So that's why we should be cautious. We should always try note down what is the best possible thing and say, 
due to unavailability, we are recommending this so that uh, somebody else will see that, well, we have thought about it, discussed about it. Yes. Kamal Bhai, for the yeah. last 17, 18 years, I cannot recall any oncologist recommended chest wall radiotherapy for a small cancer patient had a mastectomy, say two centimeter cancer mastectomy is done for various reasons, but the node was one positive nurse or two positive nodes. Now what they're saying last two years, even if for a small cancer mastectomy done, we never recommended chest wall radiotherapy, but now they're saying if there is a node positivity, we should recommend radiotherapy to chest wall. Yeah, for it, that is That's a, we will be to... covering this. I will be covering the topics of nodal irradiation. Next week, we will be talking about best conservative BCT. Then we will talk nodal radiation and mastectomy. So we will be covering this. I agree with you once it was a no radiotherapy. Now the nodal radiation is very important, giving survival benefit. We will be covering that. So we will be requesting you to make a talk that breast surgery, what is oncologists need to know? Take preparation, we will be requesting you. So nine, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, finish. Okay. So, Regan, uh, can I share the screen? Okay. So, I need a volunteer for rapid fire when the um, uh, this um, quiz result they are doing. So, can I have a volunteer? Anybody? Nobody. We have around 60 participants at one stage I have seen. Now 55. Nobody there for a rapid fire? Somebody from faculty. Maybe somebody from faculty. I, but it I would be interesting. Lima's name. No, no, Lima is tired. She is exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Why why about what about Adnan? Would you like to come? Okay, Adnan. sir. Adnan. Sir, Adnan, Adnan yeah. not Adnan, sir. It's Altaf. Yeah. Altaf, sorry. Riyad. Altaf said Riyad. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I am sorry for the name, but Riyad, can you jo join? Okay, sir. Right. Okay. okay. So, the first question Can you give hormone therapy and chemotherapy together? No, sir. Sequentially. Yes, but the exception is gonadotropin releasing hormone in ovary. Uh, chemotherapy, we give this along with it for ovarian separation. So which trial justifies the extended use of hormone for 10 years in breast cancer? Sorry. I just uh, tell in my presentation, it was the ATOM trial. Atom. Okay. So can anti heart 2 drug atom. be given yeah. with hormone? Atom can anti heart 2 drug, yeah, yeah. Can anti heart 2 drug be given with hormone? No. Yes, it can be given with hormone. You, when you finish, you continue the Herceptin along with the hormone. There is no harm in it. So can anti heart 2 drug be given with radiotherapy or you stop it during radiotherapy? I will stop it during radiotherapy. No, you should yes. give it along with radiotherapy. There should not be an interruption of heart 2 Once you start, you continue the total Herceptin cycle. Some of our colleagues have believed that we should stop it during radiotherapy, which is wrong. Rather, if you stop it, we need to leave, give the loading dose again to start. So the culture, the recommendation is we should give anti heart to drug along with radiotherapy. There is no harm of giving anti heart to drug with radiotherapy. So which tried validated Oncotype DX test first? Which trial? First one. Taylor X is not the first one. First one is NSCBB20. NSCBB20 first have validated the Oncotype DX test. So which this group of patient can avoid chemo after doing Oncotype DX test? Common receptor positive, no negative patient. No, no, uh, what is the, which this group? This group is low, intermediate, high. Low and intermediate. Yes, low intermediate risk, risk score less than 26. Okay, which trial result will give conclusive treatment decision about all the breast cancer with one to three nodes? We are waiting for a trial result to come out that will give a conclusion that early breast cancer with node one to three, whether it can so we can avoid chemotherapy. Sir, yes. Swag trials that. Swag S1007. Swag is a big, they are doing hundreds of trials. But good, you could remember at least this. 
does mode of surgery, that is either breast conservation or mastectomy, affect the adjuvant systemic therapy? I mean, if the same patient do mastectomy or same patient do breast conservation, will you change the protocol of chemotherapy no, based sir. on the surgery? No. no. Very good. But it depends on radiotherapy. If the patient is going mastectomy T1, T2, N0, we will not give radiotherapy. But whether it is a mastectomy or a breast conservation, it is not going to impact on adjuvant chemotherapy decision. So what we understand by predictive marker? The predictive marker says about the chance of recurrence or chance of... No. Predictive chance of is the treatment response. response. And what about the prognostic marker? Prognostic marker, sir. Chance of recurrence or chance of... Yes. Yeah, marker has response. the risk of recurrence or risk of relapse. So, which meta-analysis justifies the use of adjuvant chemotherapy to offer survival benefit? Me and Lima talked quite a few minutes on this meta-analysis. I, I just forgot, sorry. You just forgot. It is Early, early. Breast Cancer Trialist Collaborative Group, EBCTCG, which was published in 2012 in Lancet. And the Oxford Trialist Group, isn't it? Okay. So, uh, this is... Now, thank you, Riyadh. Now the winner. The winner is, well, the winner is Dr. Sharif Ahmed. You like Sharif. <laughs> yes, Dr. Sharif Ahmed. Congratulations, Sharif. He has corrected 99 question out of 10. So it was not 10 out of 10. I told Lima is a tough examiner. It is it's not that easy to get 100 out of 100. Congratulations, Sharif. 5,000 taka you, will on, reach you. Uh, 5,000 taka will reach you soon. But thank you. Okay. But we don't hear your voice when we are asking questions. But silently answering is also good. Okay. Because so, it is office time. You know, sometimes it's really hard to communicate. Okay. And Congratulations, can Sharif. I can't thank see you. him. Can you see him? Yeah. You want to, uh, somebody wants to see you. Sharif, can you show your face? Yeah. yeah, here it is, Sharif. Where is Sharif? Hi, hello everyone. Good, Sharif. Congratulations. Uh, Very good. Thank you. Okay, so again I go to the... So the winner is this. Now I want to ask our Professor Hi, sir, to say a few words before we go to the session. Sir. Sir, are you there, sir? Hi, sir. Hello. Yes, a minute. Okay, sir. Yes, come on. Sir, so a few words, sir. Uh, today, I didn't ask you to say at the beginning. We are almost at the end. We will have some, maybe a few small comments from uh, the overseas, but if you want to say something, sir. Okay, I had been through this session with this little interruption in middle because my power was off. Okay, okay. sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. You missed some of the very interesting discussion. So, <laughs> sir, because thank you be with us, for us, sir. Uh -huh. sir. Heartfelt thanks to all of you. Particularly, yes, uh, particularly Lima, she, she has presented a very nice paper. And also to our faculty participants. It was a very <coughs> interesting session. I also Thank am you, sir. happy to see that your participation has been from Myanmar also. Yes, sir. Anyone? Thank you, sir. Thank you. So for, yes, sir. For it, would you want to? Finish very quickly. I want to few very quick comments from all the three foreign faculties. For a few words, then Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. I want to congratulate Lima and all the faculties. Lima, it was an excellent presentation, and thanks to Kamal Bai for for uh, such a you know the way you handle the whole program, especially the questions and with changing the different sequ sequences and scenarios. It was absolutely brilliant. So I want you to once again congratulate all and thank you once again. Zakir Bai. Thank you very much for organizing such a beautiful session. And 
I'm, I'm learning every day so many things, especially the oncological side. I've got a few suggestions. Of course, thank you to Shahida as well for her beautiful presentation and the sequence of the way you actually presented everything. Brilliant. Now, one thing is, yes, I completely agree with uh, Farid that we need to teach everyone what is the standard. However, we have to remember that we are facing real life in Bangladesh. So real practice in Bangladesh. You don't always get that two-cut biopsy or core biopsy by everybody. So we need to learn about that as well. If you come across these kind of difficult, difficult situations, how to manage? And that's why like the scenario we have Kamal actually put in. Of course, at the end, we will say the core biopsy is a standard policy, but I think still 60, 70% of the patient people or doctors everywhere in Bangladesh, they are still practicing final desperation cytology. Maybe the availability of the core biopsy needle is not there, or maybe they're reluctant, or maybe their knowledge is not there. Yeah, so that, yeah. that is why I appreciate Kamal for his endeavor to uh, teach everybody. Second thing is, I know that you have got more interest about NCCN uh, guidelines, but can somebody from your group actually follow the NICE guideline as well and compare there's any benefit of using NCCN compared to NICE? The reason I'm saying that, Americans are very trigger, trigger friendly. They love chemotherapy because it, 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 it is actually a big some money for them as well. I'm frankly telling you, but nice we try to avoid this kind of extra expenditure for the patients and also consider the real benefits. So if somebody can actually compare this to and see whether there's anything you are gaining out of following that NCCR more widely in Bangladesh and giving more chemotherapy and causing more trouble to the patients, I'll be really grateful if somebody can compare from two groups of oncologists. And third thing is, the quiz is fantastic thing, but I'd be grateful if somebody can send the results of this quiz to us as well. Not only results, the answers. With some of the answers, I don't know. So I'll be probably, I'll learn something from these answers uh, who actually scored highest. So when you send uh, this uh, webinar, if you send the result as well, what is the correct answer, that'll be helpful for everybody. And thank you once again, and congratulations for organizing all this beautiful, beautiful program. Thank you. Thank you, Zakir Bhai. If you go to the answer sheet, you see the view. Then after the you finish it, then it will give you all the answers. Once the right. yeah, okay. yeah, that is there. So thank you, Zakir Bhai. Uh, what, what interesting thing is when we are talking about the nice guide, and I was thinking that we will bring a session to compare nice and incision, and instantly right. you suggested the same thing. So I am happy that I started becoming wise and thinking like you. I am so happy for that. Okay, now, my, my, my <laughs> so wise, now, John. John, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you. Um, Shahida, fantastic presentation. Um, I have to say, really accomplished to cover adjuvant therapy in just over an hour, you know. In breast cancer, it's a huge topic. And to pick out the salient points and share those in a, in a way that you can remember them is a really great skill to have. Um, and I again, it comes back, I think, to read and perhaps Zach said this, you know, NCCN, ESMO, they're all guidelines. And essentially, you have to remember when, you, when you're meeting your patients face to face, um, the characteristics of the patient's tumor is only one part of that sort of jigsaw puzzle. It really is important to, to, um, to factor that in when you're assessing your patients, you know, not all patients are the same, cardiac disease, stroke, etc. So it's important to marry all of this information together. But again, thank you for inviting me this morning, stroke this afternoon. Thank you, John. I think John has raised a very important issue that unfortunately we missed in our whole discussion about the comorbidity of the patient. That is a very important portion because even if patient fit everything in the full formula, but the comorbidity may change the whole scenario. So that is a very important question. And as he said, neither NCCN nor NICE nor ISMO is a Bible. This is a guide. But as an oncologist, our MDT should discuss all the pros and cons, take the literature and the evidence and discuss with the patient. And finally, we should come to a very good conclusion, which is best for the patient. We should not be very rigid that it is NCCN, it is ISMO, it is NICE. We are not buying to be of this. Thank you, John, for bringing up the very important issue of comorbidity. I'm, my apology, I should have brought it in my case in somewhere, bringing a scenario that how a comorbidity can change a big decision of a, a breast cancer patient. Now, 
uh, my personal apology to the scientific partner as a culture, we always ask them to give a vote of thanks. Last week, I missed it. So may I ask our scientific partner, uh, Sanofi Aventis, to give a vote of thanks. Very quick. Thank you, sir. I'm honored and privileged to have the opportunity to give the vote of thanks. Um, Cannot hear. Yeah. Hello. Yes, yes. Please. Am I audible? Okay. Yeah, please. Okay. Oncology yeah. Club always create a different situation uh, demanding learning platform in oncology field of Bangladesh for knowledge dissemination. Sanofi highly acknowledge the initiatives and feel honored to be partnered uh, to be the part of this program as a scientific partner. Dear Honorable Chairperson, respected overseas uh, guest faculties, speakers and other distinguished doctors and healthcare professionals, greetings from Sanofi Bangladesh. I would like to express our profound gratitude to our Honorable Professor Muhammad Abdul Hai Sir, President of Oncology Club and the Legion Oncologist of Bangladesh for his presence in this seminar. The presence of Sir itself is a great inspiration for us. Thank you, Sir, for being with us. Heartiest thanks to Dr. Shahida Alam, Assistant Professor, Department of Radiation Oncology in NICRH, for her excellent and elaborated presentation on adjuvant chemotherapy in breast cancer, whom to give and where to give, which is very important and informative topic and well discussed in this program. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to Dr. Shahida Alam for providing very clear and factual analysis to understand the situation in better way. On behalf of Sanofi, uh, I would like to extend, sorry, on behalf of Sanofi, um, I would like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks uh, to the all uh, honorable foreign delegates uh, who blessed us with their gracious presence. Heartiest gratitude to Dr. Muhammad Zakirullah, consultant oncoplastic surgeon, a breast and general surgeon, uh, Dr. SK Rizal Farid Ahmed, uh, oncoplastic breast surgeon. SK Farid Ahmed. Not Farid Ahmed, oncologic uh, base surgeon of uh, Wickham General Hospital, and John Cornebear, consultant clinical oncologist, Saint uh, Bartholomew uh, Hospital, UK, for their expert opinion. I would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Uh, AFM Kamaluddin, uh, Scientific Secretary of Oncology Club, for taking the initiative to organizing such lively interactive session and giving opportunity to Sanofi to support the program. Thanks a lot, sir. More than 60 participants from different countries uh, in this seminar is a huge success in, in itself. Uh, heartiest congratulations to today's winners, Dr. Sharif Ahmed, Junior Consultant, United Hospital. Thanks to my colleague uh, Nahid Hassan Abbas and Shahadat Hussain Rigan for their support to organizing the program successfully. With all of the, your support, we will continue this program in future. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you for Thank patience you. hearing. Thanks to all. Thank you, Lucky. So our next week, our program will be whole-based radiation therapy. We discussed uh, on chemical medical oncology quite a lot. So we want to make a big change. And next week, the very interesting thing we will try that we will make a live demonstration on treatment planning system, how we plan our whole breast radiotherapy. But it will be only on whole breast. We will not cover the nodal radiation because it will be in another session. So please try to join. Mr. Kartik Rajmani, who is the senior physicist of United, will be a faculty there. He will show live from the treatment planning system that every step, how we make a plan of a whole breast radiotherapy. And we will also discuss a few words about the hypofractionation. And I'm sure Zakir Bhai and Farid, and I request John be there. It will be interesting to hear your comments on whole breast radiotherapy. And coming soon, our topics we are bringing to TNBC, breast surgery, what oncologists need to know, nodal radiation, role of hormone therapy, metastatic breast cancer, post mastectomy radiotherapy, uncommon histopathology of breast cancer, and also any other items as per your requirement. So you are welcome to the participants to ask for that what you need. This platform is for you. So we will do whatever you want. So thank you very much. So again, thanks to the sponsor, participant, faculties, local and overseas. 
and everybody to make it nice and effective. We are happy today. We have 60 plus participants and special thanks to our Myanmar participant who made it international from participants point of view and hope she will join again and stay safe till next week. See you next week to discuss on whole breast radiotherapy.